Good morning, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another beautiful episode of Dhamma Pariyasana. Today is day uh, 42. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest today, Satiri Im, uh, who is going to share with us uh, the intricacies of self love, because a lot of people think that it is selfish. It, it, when someone is into uh, self care, self love, it's kind of a selfish thing. This is what the the, the, the normal perception that is going around uh, many people. And she's gonna share with us uh, share with us about some of the uh, self acceptance myth busters because self acceptance is what uh, we need to replace with self love. So I hope that uh, Satiri will share. Her secrets for how to maximize your self-love, self-care, so that you can live the life you had always imagined. So that's the greatest thing today. Let me paraphrase uh, Sotiri. Sotiri Im is an accomplished psychologist, psychotherapist, organizational coach, and peace builder. A lot of aspects, huh? Over the past 17 years, Sotiri's engagement with people and their unique stories has inspired her work. As a psychologist, raised and living in Cambodia, she has focused uh, her efforts on trauma, healing and reconciliation with the survivors of the Khmer Rouge and its aftermath. Her work in this area has also involved a specific focus on gender-based violence. Sotiri is also the author of a number of publications, including Understanding Trauma in Cambodia, Past and the Present, of Forced Marriage Survivors. Looks like that she's more focused on the young women uh, who might be struggling in different ways. Experience Toward Healing and a Trauma-Informed Project Planning Guidebook. Turning to her credentials. Sotiri received her master's degree in clinical psychology and counseling in 2010. She's completed a number of international training programs on human rights and peace in post-conflict countries, transitional justice in the context of post-conflict countries, psychotrauma, traumatology and trauma treatment and EDMR. Sotiri has been certified as a peace and conflict consultant uh, by this German organization called Academy, uh, sorry, Academy for Conflict Transformation in the Forum Civil Peace Service in Germany. Sotiri's recent peace building work has focused on training national facilitators across a variety of countries, doing creative dialogue and intergenerational dialogues as tools for social change. Uh, and looking at her life uh, as a young girl, being brought up traditionally as a girl and a woman, she's most passionate about her work to address gender bias and discrimination and to advocate for equality. Her strong views, commitment and actions have inspired other younger women to be the fullest of themselves, regardless of the gender. Aware of the stresses and the mental and physical exertion exercise associated with working in the field of development and the need for mental health and psychosocial support, MHPSS. Sotiri has also focused on staff and self-care and leadership coaching. She calls for mental health and mental care as one component of inclusive development because it is for sustainability, it is human rights. Um, I think this is one of the uh, longest uh, you know, introductions I made in my interviews, but uh, I, I was happy to do that because uh, okay. you've been someone who is very vocal about uh, young women at the same time. Uh, I also noticed that in one of your interviews, uh, podcasts or something, that uh, you are not only focused on uh, younger women, you focus on everybody who wanted to, uh, you know, who wants to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, fight for their rights in terms of injustice, uh, inequality, and all that. So, uh, Dhamma friends, please join me in welcoming Sotiri Im. Sotiri, how are you today? I am good. I'm good. Yes. 
I just I, know. I start I start my morning with yoga and breathing <laughs> exercise. That was good. What a very organic way of starting the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I know that uh, you've been giving a lot of you know uh, substantial talks uh, recently. I noticed that you gave a talk at uh, uh, where where do you call it? Uh, TED Talks. TED and talk. And you also TED given talk. talks uh, in different capacities i i think that you gave a talk about uh, uh gender, gender uh, bias or discrimination at the university of sydney australia at the same time uh, in countries like iraq nepal germany and all these places so you kind of somebody who is espousing and who is maintaining this uh, uh, valuable piece of thought you are uh, you know raising awareness of, about all this so this is why i wanted to invite uh, uh, invite you to talk about this particular topic, uh, self uh, love, because self love is such a very misperceived and uh, you know misunderstood uh, topic in today's world. Because a lot of people think that self love is often one of the clearest forms of selfishness. Let me let me uh, you know kick off uh, by introducing you a couple uh, myths so that you can sort of delineate uh, these uh, you know myths so one of the myths that i found out about self love is it is selfish this is one big myth in society uh, another myth is material body is self love a lot of people think that if they can go to a spa uh, if they can go to uh, a massage parlor, they can get a, a pedicure, nail care, massage, uh, that is self-care, that is self. So they, they kind of like, you know, uh, put it in a way that material body is self-love, mm -hmm. which, which might not be true because it's kind of a whole expanded version of life. Uh, another myth is self-love is egotistical and self-centered, kind of, you know, uh, revolves around kind of a big ego, according to them. And one last uh, myth is self-love is for the weak. Strong people don't need self-care. I think ah. people who want self-care is those who are weak, who are, mm. who are weak, who, who don't have strength. Mm. So mm. Uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, begin our discussion in a way how you address these couple of things and we will go into uh, how do we define and all that. So Satiri, how do you see these myths and how we can break free these uh, myths and then, you know, uh, get started this? Great, thank you. But thank you for having me actually. Um, I'm happy to, to be, uh, to speak louder and to for the country here in Cambodia also to, uh, to, to, to the world about about love yourself, about self love, or in other words, it's loving yourself. Um, and apologies, my English is English is the second language, so I might use some words that is uh, not the right uh, uh, sentence. So, uh, uh, yeah, that is uh, perfectly tolerable yeah. because we all understand. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, I hope that we yeah. can bring uh, some, con uh, you know, uh, what do you call the contents about the topic. So uh, I don't Great. think other than that, yes, that's there's good. something that's we good. can worry about. That's good. Yeah, go that's ahead. good. That's good. I'm very interested in what you shared earlier about material bodies and a few other things that that is, in fact, a lot of people think it is the only way to self-care, uh, which is part of it, but not. But first, I want to really address just the word uh, self-love. What does that mean? And because some, as you say, a lot of people are confused about the word and they don't dare even to use the word because they feel it's a selfish or they may feel, oh, I'm weak, that's why I need to take care of myself. You're right. So love means simply mean love yourself and love yourself mean like having a, a high respect, uh, high respect to yourself or, uh, or respect your own needs, respect your own needs. If you need something, you have to respond to it rather than just keep it, keeping it and, and say, no, I should not have this my children's or my neighbors or my family members should have it. So that doesn't 
that's 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 not self love. So, what you need, respect yourself. What you need, especially respect yourself for your well being and happiness, for your well being and happiness. Um, you you can also say, looking looking at your own need. While also taking care and listen to others' need, but don't prioritize the others' need than your need. If you prioritize others' need than your own needs, it means you're sacrificing. That's the word sacrificing is is already explained enough that you don't love yourself enough, and don't sacrifice yourself. Give everything from you to others. Just to please other, that doesn't mean that's 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 not self love. So, in short, love yourself, give a high respect to yourself. And what are the actions that around self love? A lot of people, as you mentioned earlier, thinks that self love has a lot to do with met, being uh, materialistic or involved with something commercials like going to spa. Go swimming, going to like for women's nail care. Uh, some people uh, also count uh, plastic surgery as self love. And for me, I would, I would, I would, I would describe later why people do. Like we can talk uh, later in this session about about what makes people do plastic surgery. For example, is it self love? Is it because they or, or they feel not, or they feel not complete. Oh, sorry, my neighbor. <laughs> um, is it disturbing? My, it's okay. Yeah, uh, self love can can start from uh, self love can start from being aware, especially listen to yourself, listen to your heart. Response to it. Respect yourself. Sometimes uh, these words, especially women, we are we are raised to take care of others. A lot of women, not every woman, but a lot of women in in many uh, society, are taught to take care of others. Her husband, her family members, her older, her, her parents, and her children, and then uh, uh, when she do something for herself, people project it. Her or giving feedback that no, this is not 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 loving your family. This is selfish. So most of the case, uh, I work with women. They are struggling with with loving themselves because the surrounding the surrounding tell them tell them that it's selfish. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, uh, the kind of introduction you brought up, and you know. One of the interesting things that I wanted to ask you, also uh, the definition. I, I think it's sort of like delineated the definition, but uh, let's take a look at of uh, how do many people look at this word called self love. Now, for starters, mm -hmm. it can mean for starters like someone who wanted to look at it. Okay, what is self love? How am I going to get started? So they might look at it in a way talking to and about yourself with love prioritizing yourself because they don't know how to deprioritize, giving yourself a break from self-judgment, trusting yourself, being true to yourself, being nice to yourself, setting healthy boundaries and forgiveness. Now, uh, you know, in contrast to these starters, many people think this is uh, differently. They might think, uh, listen to our bodies, uh, take breaks from work, uh, and move, stretch, and probably uh, put the phone down. You know, <laughs> they're always struggling with the phone. I did this morning yoga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. in this uh, fast faceted world, and then connect to ourselves. Uh, so this is how they look at. I think people look at self care differently. Self where self love is a part of. So, uh, and also people think self love is a little bit, you know, odd than self-care so uh, you know there are things going on with uh, this uh, self-love thing at the same time we had to look at where does our society stand on self-love right 
because I myself can uh, be very much into self-care, but I don't know because I had to work with society. I had to work some way. I had to uh, engage, interact with other people. So this is what the society, uh, uh, you know, thinks might affect my thoughts. So in short, what does self-love mean to you? And what do you think about where does our society stand on self-love? I mean, you can sort of, you know, combine these two uh, in short. You are, you are, you speak already mentioned uh, the word love. It's especially, it's different definitions. Like I have my own definition of self-love. You have definition of, of self-love. Definition, especially a uh, definition, not much difference, but the thing is what we do to do, to, to, to love and care yourself. That, that's a lot varied. That's a lot uh, uh, just different. I myself, I start to, to take care of myself after I made myself love myself. <laughs> so when once I love myself, I start to take care of myself. Because I, I people told me when I was like, when I was burnt out, experienced burnt out back to like seven, eight years ago, people told me that you work so hard. I was working. I was working hard with a survivor of sexual abuse and sexual exploitations. I do psychotherapy for them. And it was the, the burnout experience that I had to quit. I had to quit uh, clinical works for, for some years, for some years. And I just, I just had, I had to be honest with, with, with you that I just regained this energy back and restarting my, my clinical work after that long and huge burnout. Uh, I care of others so much. I care of others, uh, uh, other women's uh, right and equality, the, uh, social injustice so much that I forget to love myself. So then I define the word. I sit down and define the word like, yes, I have to love myself first before I can do something to, to women and other society. So start with love and care of my, myself. And the way, of, the way I care of myself is I look in. I really look in. I also look out, care of myself physically, a body physically. I make sure that I'm fit. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not overweight because, um, again, people the overweight or big people can also love themselves and, and take care of themselves. But for me, I like to feel good enough, light enough, not heavy because heavy it make me feel sick. Uh, so again, that's all definition to me. Uh, so I take care of myself physically and mentally. And when I take care of myself mentally, I really look down, look in into my heart. I work a lot on my inner child. I work a lot with my inner child, looking back into my, my, my uh, childhood traumas, my childhood unpleasant experience. And take them out, speak to uh, speak to my inner child, what was the wound, what should I heal, especially during this uh, COVID-19 lockdowns and pandemic and lockdowns, I have to admit that I take this chance a lot to work on myself and I realize that this is important and I always spread the word that don't be panicked, don't be so just frustrated with, with COVID-19. It also could be a time you can look into yourself and heal yourself. This is the way that uh, 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 when you hurt, take it as, as a gift. But there's something you need to heal yourself. Yeah, so inside and outside for me is, 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 is caring. Yeah, and when I care, when I care about myself and love myself, I feel so good about myself and I can uh, take care of others too. Right. Now, when we and when, yeah, and when you talk about the society, yeah. when you talk when we talk about the society, again coming back into self love and individual self, uh, connect to others, uh, uh, relate to others. It's all. I, 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 I explain, let me put into a simple word like this. When I, when I talk to people, I said, well, if you don't love yourself enough, if you, have, you don't feel peace in yourself enough, it's like you're holding a bowl of, of fire. 
it's holding a ball of your fire in the heart it burns you it burns you and it's also the fires come out to others so you cannot make peace uh, uh, with others and if everyone just holding the ball of fire in the heart the society won't be at peace the society just fuel each other with con- uh, with fires and conflict when we look at social point of view about self care or self love specifically self love uh, as i said at the beginning there are a lot of misconceived uh, misperceived uh, thoughts notions going on probably assumptions mm-hmm. now the now the thing is in the west where i live uh, we have always have the impression of be you be you right mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. this sense of independence sense of uh, sense of uh, independence sense mm. of uh, being on your feet all the time stand on your own feet but in the east because of the social pressures i'm not saying west is better than the east i'm i'm, I'm looking at because you you speak up for the uh, young women and, and the people uh, in your country for coming up and then you know speak up and all that awareness so i i think there is definitely social pressure there is definitely cultural pressure for people not to be them not to be who they are so i think there is definitely this social pressure peer pressure uh, cultural pressure uh, so and so forth so in light of uh, these different pressures and you know stigmas and all that uh, how can someone you know tap into self care you know how can someone uh, stand on one's own feet hey i want to i want to practice my self improvement work from today it doesn't mean that i want to go to a nail care place or massage place or a, so and so forth i want to think about myself but i, I but i, I don't want to be labeled as someone <clears throat> who is selfish which the which the kind of terming that many people say outside there so what is your piece of advice for someone to start off this thing who already understand this is an issue i, I got to you know begin my self improvement practice so how does someone start out this especially for someone who is living in a culture where the culture adamantly says that you can be you you have to be the person that who we think you are you know yes. so how does someone you know uh, give a start kick off this thing thank you thank you Uh, that's a lot to to elaborate i also wish to elaborate uh the selfish and self love as well but uh before that uh i worked a lot and and i my thesis uh master thesis is a lot uh, working on um attachment and bonding and the way and these day i work a lot advocate a lot on um on parenting on parenting Uh, the way i when i mention advocate on parenting i ask i i talk to people to look at the the way they parent <laughs> they parenting their kids is it pressures is it is it like how freedom enough how pressure uh, how much pressure you you want to them people's always try to raise i mean, families including society people uh, people try to raise uh, Uh, a child in like in a box or in a frame they say like you have to walk the right path you cannot just and that's already limits the creativity and and yeah, in boxing in boxing in there. boxing yeah and and depress uh, uh, suppress and living and living with suppress is it's again if we look at it it's 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 a power relations when, when when we look at conflict and peace perspectives it's it's power relations and you already mentioned that when you when someone do not follow you do not follow us you kind of upset and you try to suppress that person or you have to listen to me this is wrong this is right and that's nothing right or wrong it's about uh, uh, if we speak about human kind it should not be right or wrong nothing uh, uh, it should be the person uh, uh, themselves i I also don't want to judge or any western or eastern uh, uh, culture or society 
but again, I'm looking at the uh, the way the way parents teach their children are so much different, and sometimes these two try to ac accuse each other. Like when the women, for example, or the children, is a bit like arguing or say no to the suppression, they start to say, "Why are you so westernized?" It's it's starting to 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 have accusing Escalate. each other, escalating escalating the conflict, and and actually I. I, the way I, uh, the way I, I, I parenting my children is not is free from suppressions, uh, so they can love themselves. Because I admit that as being a mother, uh, being a mother, um, especially since <laughs> becoming a single mother, I realize that I don't have energy to re just to to just really controlling and taking care. Why? Why do I need to take? Uh, why do I need to control people the way I want to? Let them do the way the way they they, they want to, and listen to each other. Uh, because love themselves, I because I believe that loving themselves, loving myself, I can able I I am able to love others. That's my parenting style, and that's what I'm 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 advocating. Coming back to the society that is pressures, especially for women and self care. Uh, looking at the, uh, the the looking at history that which is not far, not long ago. Sadly, that a lot of women uh, are thinking about self care. Most of them, including me, is when we experience burnout. When we experience overwhelming feeling, and again get back to because we were raised that as a woman you have to take care of of of, of this of your family of your society. So I and what I changed in my work these days, I talk about self love and self care for the advocates for the advocates since the beginning. For example, I in in your introductions about me. It is part of the inclusive uh, uh, leadership, uh, uh, inclusive development. Every leader should start to love themselves before they, they they burn out, because it's the love spread. Yeah. And self, okay. self love and selfish. Uh, by the way, self love and selfish. Uh, you also spoke about it already. That actually, selfish is most likely the word that we hear from outside. It's we hear from outside a lot, so it means a control actions from someone, from someone, and a sharing experience from my clinical work. Uh, self love is is difficult. It's easy to say, easy to speak, but difficult to do because of these words that's coming in to us. It's always intrusive. It's intrusive word that comes to days and night when I do some things uh, for myself. These words coming in, and that's also pointing into into deep down into that person's self. They even say, "I'm not enough because I do this. Uh, I, I I can't fulfill the needs of others." That's huge things around. So, Tiri, could you move to the left a little bit? Your camera is kind of camera a little <laughs> okay. bit, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. So the moment when someone gets to think about independence, freedom, people always say you've been westernized. Perhaps yeah, not. A lot. Perhaps not. A lot say yeah. That person not. is my that that person is trying to open up and go yes. beyond. Yes. Uh, and, and you know because of the needs. Yeah, because of internet, a lot of people get to see uh, things from different countries. Uh, apart from that, uh, when someone wants to speak up, uh, open up, they always label that person. You are westernized. You following westernized stuff? Perhaps not. So we had to always look at these things differently. Okay. True. 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 Yeah. Actually, it's nothing about westernized or eastern or whatever. It's about yeah, it's a freedom. It's they, independence. Yes. Yes, yeah. I want freedom. I want freedom. That's why I do this. I and really? I always say there was a uh, any time any suppressions comes freedom. Yeah, because when we are not in uh, 
you know, independence, uh, freedom. Our thoughts are affected, our speech is affected, our actions are affected. So that's the biggest tumbling block, I think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, my next question is actually how we can, you know, look at self-love. If the self-love is frowned upon by society, then we know the perfect term for this is self-acceptance. Now in self-love, what we see is self-acceptance. So I could say true self-love is in fact self-acceptance. It's about your own happiness and well-being. So if you are not happy, then you are not taking care of your well-being. You are not taking mm. charge of you. So how do we substitute self-acceptance uh, with self-love if self-love is socially st stigmatized and frowned upon? But, mm -hmm. you know, people know self-love as a buzzword, but uh, self-acceptance is something that people can, uh, you know, look at a little bit uh, deeper so that they understand what you see in self-love is none other than self-acceptance. So mm -hmm. what do you think? Uh, this mm -hmm. Would this be a good substitution uh, for self-love? Okay. I, listening to you, uh, uh, I... I imagine I hear the transformations. I hear the transformations. It's a process. It's not just it's not just the word itself. But I hear uh, you didn't say the word self awareness, but I hear also the word self awareness in there. Self awareness, self acceptance, self love, and it's. There's some people say, which one come first, eggs or chicken? <laughs> it remind me of this. Um, but self love. To, to, to love yourself, you need to accept yourself. And as well, to accept yourself, you also need to love yourself as well. So both are, are really, it's different words, different, uh, but it's correlated. It's correlated. I can't love myself if I, if I don't accept myself who I am. Like if I'm, I'm so much in the denial that, uh, in in my society, uh, uh, skin of color, I I'm almost count as people. I mean, people could uh, call me a uh, people with uh, people with color. I I'm yeah, I'm yellow, a, a bit dark. Uh, if I allowed others' words to hurt myself, I don't accept myself. Who am I? I uh, I would just have to go to like skin bleaching or whatever to make myself white. So that's, that's again uh, going back to what we spoke earlier about uh, intrusive words from others. So I accept myself. I love my skin. I love the way am I. And if not, there are some time I have to admit that there are some time I use the, the skin care I, I have to use the skincare just to 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 make my skin the way I want. But I'm, and and this is not this is not denying myself. This is not denying myself. Some people would argue that now if you if you truly love yourself, Satiri, you just be the wild human being as 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 before as the early age. And I said, but well. But then if I go back to that age, I wouldn't love myself the way I am. So I do something also to love myself, but not to like exaggerate or being commercialized. Because I don't because, uh, sorry to bother you. Because they think that you they think that people have a certain role in each era. They don't want to accept the person uh, in the way how he she wants to be uh, with this with a specific uh, sort of uh, feeling. They kind of they kind of label you. You have to be like this. You have to be like this. Yeah, it's yeah, yes. You have to be like this. You have to be like this. It's true. A woman beautiful. You have to be one, two, three. That's called a beautiful woman. That's often like this. You have to be white. You have to be this shapes, whatever. So if we don't accept ourselves and always try to to like to fulfill the needs of others in terms of you, the way you should look, you cannot love yourself. And you cannot love yourself. Again, I want to deliver uh, uh, to share the word uh, awareness. I, I told, I speak earlier about uh, these days. Not just these days. I work a lot on my inner child. 
that's a self-awareness. That's a self-awareness I've been through. Uh, after I'm aware that this is my missing point, this is my wounds, this is my unpleasant feeling. Aware, being aware of it, accept it, do not deny it, and I can love myself. That's also a, a, it's really a huge process. And if I if I could describe it into psychotherapy, it's it's a long session. In in in, in it's a it's a long uh, yeah session. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about uh, why we should care our self love. Why we should uh, practice self love. Why? Because we know uh, it's a good thing. But why? Okay, there are people who kill themselves because they don't love themselves. I don't want to exaggerate things, but case like this happen. People kill themselves because they cannot, uh, they feel so much hurt. And hurt comes because you don't, you don't like yourself. You don't feel enough, especially the depressed people. When you, are, when you live under, I always, I always say the word, try to live try to live free from people's expectations try to live your life don't live the life of others that's that doesn't stop love and it is okay it is okay to refuse it is okay to say no we learned i know that we learned uh, we learned from parenting from school from society but it's okay to unlearn and learn new things to love yourself because if you don't love yourself it's so hurt. It is hurt. How can you love others? Even you try to love others, it's fake. It's fake. You cannot love your husband. You cannot love your children if you don't love yourself. It's fake. It's like a fake smile. It's hurt. You can fake your smiles in a day, but in your bed, you bring it back like, oh my gosh, it's denial. And denial, again, holding the bolt of the fire. You cannot make peace to others uh, uh, if you cannot make peace to yourself. There's a lot of cases here that uh, 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 that I experience in my clinical works. It's all self-denial. Depression, suicide, quit jobs, a lot of things. It's, it's about self-denial. And you think uh, the main reason behind all these tragedies is the lack of self self, lack of care, self, -love. self -love. Great. Yeah, and you can create war. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's okay. it's now from here and to house and to community and to the world. If you don't peace, if you don't find peace in yourself. Okay, so apart from the people who have uh, been suffering and who suffered and who uh, took their lives, uh, what about other people who don't want to do that but they are still su su suffering, struggling? So you ask them to sort of. Uh, you know, look at your self-care, self-love aspect and then start your uh, self-improvement work process from today. This is the, this is the sort of uh, suggestion, right? And I, can, I, can I share one story from the community? Yeah, I, um, two years ago, I, I, I deliver, I was um, in, in one, in, in my job, I deliver training and workshops on to women uh, who live with disabilities. Uh, I had a chance that time, the projects travel uh, the country here in Cambodia. Um, one of the participants of many others, uh, she had the chance to speak proudly in the workshop saying, um, well, missed. I am so happy that I can work for my community. I was, I am the uh, the member of a commune council here in my village, uh, in my commune. I am a mother of of a uh, of a young boy. My parents in law uh, uh, admire me so much that I can take care of her, of them, I can take care of my parents, I can take care of my family members, my husband well, and I can also contribute my work to, this, to, the, to the commune, to being a, a commune council. I am a superwoman. They said that, I'm so proud of myself, I'm a superwoman. I don't, I, I don't react much, I only ask her one question. Does this make you happy? And she was just crying. She was just crying. He said, 
No. I make others happy, but not me. Because I, I really have time for myself. And I suffer a lot from this. That's a great example, talking about self-care and caring about others, living under expectation of others. And that's becoming, when, when we get back into power struggling against it, it's uh, manipulative. It is manipulative. It's a used. It's a used. I also advocate this kind of aspect to to uh, to women and family here. It's like we try to be, we we did a lot of things to change the society, the family and society. That women has the right to go vote. Women has the right to go out for work to earn the income. And then we have this. We achieve this. And back home, she has to do everything again. Households, housework, expectations from the family, from the, from the in-law. That's not right. That's manipulative. So again, I call for every woman who thinks she should be the superwoman. But you don't love yourself, that means. Yeah. Great. Great. OK, we come to the most important part of our discussion interview. Oh. That is, we can, that is what uh, uh, is all about uh, the sort of things that people can do, uh, tips that you can share for people to practice self-love. Okay, so what are the tips or uh, steps that people can do to practice self-care? How do we practice self-love, uh, which is a part of self-care? What are the exact uh, let's kind of nail down, narrow down to, boil down to a couple of steps. Like people know mindfulness, um, you know, some people might say it's mindfulness. Uh, it could be, you know, taking actions based on what you need rather than what you want uh, and healthy habits. And I, I probably think you have, you have uh, a different other or probably the same, uh, you know, tips, steps that you can share with us. Can you sort of... Uh, share with us a couple of steps people can practice in their daily life for those who want to start today, for those who want to deepen their self-care, self-love practice. Thank you. Thank you. I won't speak, I won't speak uh, about activity much, especially I uh, already, uh, there is uh, commercials around and that, and, and spreading around that, okay, self-love you have to meditate you have to do yoga you have to sports you have to uh, to to lock in this app to make you to to, to do your self-care that's a lot happening these days especially uh, during the online digital uh, uh, kicks in during the covid there's a lot of app uh, and <laughs> uh, create for this but the basic things that i think it could uh, uh, oh, again if you follow just those app or those uh, commercials, uh, yeah, those those uh, commercialized things, or you just follow friends or suggestions from friends, it won't last long. So my tips to last long is that to love yourself, to take care of yourself, first you need to be yourself. Be yourself. Listen to yourself what you want. Be yourself in terms of knowing what you want physically, mentally, your emotions, what hurts you, what not hurts you, what makes you happy, what makes you live uh, 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 meaningful. Again, we have, there's a long topic about living happy and living meaningful life that I don't want to discuss here because it's, it's a huge thing, uh, debates as well about happy and living and, and meaningful, but starting to be yourself. Again, not to live under people, others, people's life and expectations. Live yourself. You can start and live and be yourself. You can start with every morning. Just give a smile to yourself. Getting up gently, mindful about your living, mindful about your eating, mindful about what's around you. I know myself, even... And my body associated with those very well. If I feel upset, my skin tells me, my heart tells me. So I feel like I appreciate this, that 
this is a sign for me to take care of myself. And these days I do a lot of things to avoid uh, negative people. For example, if I know that negative people give me uh, uh, a bad energy, I, I avoid or I speak less to them. So that's part of being yourself and knowing yourself too. Uh, uh, living healthy, say no, speak for yourself, speak for yourself. Even, even you can speak to your boss, your parents. Communicate. Communicate well that this is my need. This is, this is what I want. Be transparent about your emotions is also uh, uh, um, tips to self-care. Yeah, and if you can do this, I'm sure that people around you uh, 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 also receive the love. A lot of people uh, uh, here I talk to when I deliver my workshop on self-care uh, and other talks, they, they often, at least in every workshop, at least I hear from one or two saying, they call me net crew, they refer me net crew to me like facilitator or, or teacher. Say, what I want to get from you today is to be able to smile like you anytime because I cannot do that. And that's that what they said to me. And I say, well, you have to feel like you're pleased, you're happy with yourself. And also, sometimes life as is, is up time that up and down sometimes i do a lot of short meditations looking into it and i tell you i tell myself that yes it is me i don't deny it and if it is too hard i also try to fake my smile fake my smiles and then i can feel the smiles and it heals me it heals me too okay yeah let me let me uh, summarize what you said. So the first thing that everyone has to do is uh, be yeah. you, <clears throat> be you, be yourself. But in that uh, satiri, some people might deny uh, caring others too because th th this is not a very important part too. You have to care others too, but you should not forget about yourself, right? Care you first and then care others. A lot of people, what they do is care others, they ignore them. Yeah. Right? Yep. A good balance yep. should be always yep. there. Yep. Number yep. two was, uh, would, would you mind, uh, you know, sharing with us again? What's the second step you said? I, uh, I, I said, get up, live, live mindful. Okay, mindfulness. Like, yeah, give, live mindful. You can get up with a smile to yourself and eat mm -hmm. healthy, something like that. Yeah. Look at yeah. you with a smiling face at the same time. Do some external things as well as uh, internal mental work. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, it's, it's aligned together. Okay, uh, what are the other things that they could do, like mini stuff on a day? Like, uh, because we see, we, we, we kind of, you know, get bombarded by a lot of negative things on the internet. Uh, there are, uh, you know, tragedies happening, people are dying, people are getting killed, uh, people are doing bad things. now. Bad things are spreading very fast than the good things. Yes. If you yes. look at the internet, uh, you see a lot of negative stuff, right? People, a lot of negative stuff. So negativity is actually taking over the good positive stuff. So mm -hmm. how does someone stay positive and uh, you know uh, maintain this attitude of self care, self love on a daily basis? I know, uh, be yourself. Uh, Smile a lot if you can, uh, at <laughs> looking at your internal uh, inside within your stuff. Uh, probably engage with your family uh, and friends uh, in a proper mm. way. At the same time, how to stay away from this negative stuff on the internet and, uh, you know, this negative stuff. So how, how would you think? What could be a good attitude? Because we can't stop internet, right? We can't stop what we see on internet. So how to look at them? You know, that could be a best, good way to ask a question, you know, about how to spend the day without being affected. True. Um, yeah. True, true, true. Life is always up and down. And days is always like different things come to us. Like also as a peace and conflict consultant what, and, 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 and women's advocates, what hurts me is hearing conflict, hearing violence, hearing war in this part of the world and this. So that's really something that hits me. 
badly. So what I manage, what I manage this is that I'm first will think that okay, okay, it hits me now. Again, my heart speaks to me that this is something, something um, hurting, and I I know myself that in the morning, any times I feel or I experience that that aggressive or that angry, it disturbs me at night. So really, again, the, the, the aspects of self awareness. So I don't want to. I don't want to disturb my night. I really need to process myself uh, um, immediately, or at least sometimes before I before I go to bed, etc. But to limit this, when I hear the conflict or arguments in social media, that fighting, I first starting also to to practice before practice compassions. I start to filter the, the news. I start to filter the news. Is this fake news? Or this is a uh, good news that I should go for? Is it, should I look at this photo? Should I click in? Uh, I click this link to look for photo that could be killing or could be whatever. So I really limit this. I really filter. And the way I do is also, thank you to some of my good friends. I have different, uh, 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 good friends in terms of when I mean different good friends I mean different expertise different fields of work so if I want to know this like often I connect to my friends a lot and say um, I'm detoxing to my social media for example these lock recently locked down in Phnom Penh I said I'm detoxing social, uh, Facebook or social media so would you mind like every evening tell me a little bit like a few points that's what I did. That's what I did to to uh, to friends, and they're happy. They don't find it burden. Then, yeah, I think uh, we lost. But practice compassions uh, is also, and and practice compassions is also one thing. Sometimes I tell myself that I cannot go and deal with to end the conflict there, to end the conflict in this. So I go in. I cannot go out, but I can go in uh, to manage my angers and my... Be compassionate. Stress. Yes, be compassionate. I, I like the way you uh, term that, uh, you know, uh, detoxing our social media use. Uh, that's a good way of looking at it, because we always have, we always have a choice not whether yes. to click or not. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And also to also to be angry to angry with someone is also our choice. Because angry, it's it's again it's a it's a boiling fire. So it's you choose to keep angry with that one, or make yourself happy. <laughs> and and a lot of people also confused with the word forgiving, and forget it's different. You don't forget, but you forgive because you're happy. You will be more happy with yourself. Uh, this brings to my mind uh, one of the Theravada Pali suttas uh, given by the Buddha, Attarakita Sutta, in, in the Pali Canon, wherein Buddha says, the real self-care is taking care of one's actions, speech, and thoughts. Yeah. Now, this is right. what we're going to, what you said, what you brought up by saying, we, we always have a, a choice whether to click or not. Whether to follow this or not, we always can follow, unfollow, subscribe, unsubscribe, watch or not watch, right? So taking care of your thoughts mean uh, taking care of your mind from uh, covetousness, uh, thoughts of killing other people, destroying other beings, and then from wrong view. Taking care of uh, the speech means uh, uh, taking care of your, uh, your, your speech from lying, slandering, talking behind the back from hurtful words and being a gossip or idle chatter. Taking care of your actions mean uh, take care of you from killing other beings, stealing and misbehaving. So uh, the same thing. So people always have, a, uh, opportunity, have an opportunity to protect oneself. At the same time, one of our, uh, one of our actually uh, friends here pointed out something as a comment. Uh, equanimity is important for mental health. So equanimity is a kind of balance. This is what I'm going to ask you next, uh, Satiri. Now, because time is kind of speeding up, uh, I wanted to ask you 
this particular aspect of self-care. Now, as I brought up at the beginning, self-love is often frowned upon and then branded as uh, as an element of selfless selfishness. So how to stay selfless, especially when we want to practice uh, self-love? Because I also always think that the accusation of selfishness that people bring to self-love might conceal an attempt of manipulation. Because when people want to manipulate, they say, hey, you are selfish. Now, the other thing is, there are- They make, they make you rethink. <laughs> make you rethink, am, yeah. I, am I selfish? Yeah. Am I selfish? Question well, yourself. I, yeah, yeah, I see this uh, twofold, like in two angles. One is uh, projections. The other uh, aspect is rationalization. Now, for example, now people project about selfish things. They say, look how selfish he is, she is. I would never do such a thing. I mean, they kind of telling uh, uh, to other people or telling to themselves, or they kind of ration, rationalize, uh, rationalize the particular event. I am not being selfish. I am doing what is best for everyone. They kind of they kind of vocal about it. They look at what other people do and they kind of brand that they are selfish and they they are self pleasing themselves. I am not mm. like that. So, I probably think we need some selfishness to survive both literally and figuratively but it is not the selfishness that yeah. the society frowned upon yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not the it's not the, the you know it's not the the gravest bad thing right uh, it's not the very the most negative bad thing but i i don't think self-love that we talk about is, is, is not uh, the kind of selfishness that people always uh, brag because the thing is uh, the, the most important part in our uh, discussion is that self-love is something where we consider ourselves as valuable as others. We are not trying to miss out on that uh, most important part, no more, no less. So true acceptance of, uh, you know, this notion, ourselves and so on and so forth, eliminates insecure insecurities because all have you all we all may have insecurities when we when we don't look at us because other people's stuff matter okay i'm not that good because i'm not looking at my kid right as well as the resentment towards other people okay? so uh when we have self-love then we no longer have the need to prove ourselves to others some people they brag a lot yeah i'm like this mm. so and so forth because they don't believe in themselves you don't need to say that you don't need to brag about you right so self-love, the kind of self-love we talk about uh, doesn't make us proud, boastful, or envious. Instead, it makes us patient, more understanding of others, overall make us a better person. So with all that in mind, I wanted to ask you this uh, last question before the conclusion. Now, there are two aspects then again uh, about uh, handling self-love. One is selfishness for those who do not care at all oneself and other people the second aspect is people who are overly altruistic they are overly concerned they don't uh, have a good sleep they don't have a good shower they they make money they all spend on other people you know uh, so they are on the both extremes so selfishness for those who only think about them some people only think about others they don't think about themselves at all so how do you see these two and how do you ask those people to stay balanced so the the, the concept is equanimity uh, this is the buddhist concept so with that we can uh, go into the conclusion you remind me of the buddha teachings taking the middle way <laughs> yes the middle way i practice myself as well uh, let's let's not live in in in, in, in a difference let's not, not living in extremes, one dimensions. So middle ways is, 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 a, great, is a great practice. Uh, uh, living middle ways, uh, uh, also what I did is also, again, come back to compassion. When I do things that, that I do for myself, I also ask questions that, um, I don't ask questions, is it selfish, but I ask, I put myself in, 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 in a compassion mode. Like if I were them, what, how would I perceive? 
So I don't, again, I don't ask myself, is it selfish if I do that? No, I don't. Uh, uh, because I, I believe that a lot of things that I do for myself is just for myself. It's not selfish. Because the selfish for me means if I manipulate others, if I, if I, if I uh, like, yeah, manipulate others or, or stealing others or, or disturbing others. I don't. I do things just for myself. For example, I eat, uh, I eat uh, the whole potatoes when I'm hungry. But if I feel like, if I see others, if I see you hungry, I can share with you. But it's my decisions to give you half or to give you one third. And that, that doesn't mean selfish. You can't say, come on, you're selfish. You, go, you, you, you get uh, two thirds and, and, and I'm one third. It's your definitions. Me, I'm not. I may have my reason why I eat two thirds and I give you one third. Um, um, reasons around compassions. Uh, I, and when, when, when I talk about self-love and selfish, I also keep asking myself, well, if I do things that I feel selfish, which I don't, I don't often do, I, I don't often feel selfish because I, I balance enough. But at the end of the day, if you do selfish things, you're sad in the, in the evenings. You don't feel happy. You don't feel happy at the end of your day. You don't praise yourself. Or you don't praise, this, the, the, you don't praise this, the, the day if you're doing some selfish act. And again, like you question yourself, and question yourself is not it's not it's not the good thing. Balance yourself. So keep it short. Balance it. Middle way. Practice compassion. Is it enough for you, or is it just a greedy act? Is it enough? Is it greedy? What if I share? And if I share, I also feel good. So self love and sharing also make you feel good. It's not about it's for others, but also it's for yourself. And, and I, I really strongly suggest those who experience the extremes come into middle ways and practice this. You know, some people, they quantify. I think most people, they quantify, you know, is it a bit of selfishness and a bit of altruism and I'm okay? Is that, how do you respond to that? So like when you say the balance, uh, we know that we are supposed to be in the, in the middle path, you know, <clears throat> be in the middle and uh, you know, when you take charge of you, uh, we can't say that is exactly being selfish because even the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, they they had to fulfill the paramitas, perfection yeah. to become the Buddha, right? If they always, uh, you know, uh, did help others uh, the way that people expected, that they could not have uh, attained the enlightenment. So, which means we should have a perfect balance between selfishness and altruism so we should not choose one or the other a lot of people they choose one or the other they choose either selfishness or they choose uh, altruism so we should not choose one or the other we have to have a perfect balance between these two yeah and to be nice to yourself to love yourself and to be nice to yourself we have to accept that uh, you accept your floor people has floor people do good things well as as floor Sometimes if I do things that I myself feel uh, selfish or people really just everyone like projecting on me, pointing fingers on me, you're selfish. It is also okay to, to, to live with it, accept it and move on. Heal yourself, like get it as a lesson learned as well. Do not just, do not just drown, drowning into the, into the, like into the, the belief that, oh, I'm bad. I cannot move on. I cannot because of others' out. comments. Yes, of others' comments. So accept your flaw is also uh, a, a part of the self-care and self-love. Great. So, uh, are there any other things you wanted to add as the conclusion? If there Was there anything that you missed out uh, on sharing with us? You can now bring them. Uh, <laughs> so I, I might speak, I may speak a lot about self-care for women, but self-care and self-love is not only for women, it's for every being, every human being, uh, because 
we need to be healthy so the rest of the family and the rest of the society and the world healthy so do it together do not just say you're weak you're strong enough you're a man you are a woman you are a boy you are a girl we live in a divided you live we live in a an in a enough divided society let's bring love to the society from loving yourself i believe um I believe a change happens. It starts from small things, and it starts from you. Changes happen with us at the same time. I think we are the change agents. Yes. We think that other people will change our destiny <laughs> to a better, successful one. Uh, so yeah. thank you. At the same time, someone is asking. Tell us about what what EMDR means as a comment. Uh, <laughs> psychotraumatology and trauma treatment. What, what does oh, EMDR mean? Okay. EMDR is one of the one of the latest uh, psychotherapy, psycho uh, psychotherapeutic therapy. I uh, that uh, E uh, stand for I movement decentralizations and reprocessing. It's uh, EMDR. Yeah, E I movement decentralize. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, and reprocessing it's uh, it's we believe this is one um uh one latest uh, uh psychotherapies that involve with unlock the memory in the trauma in in the brain because oh. when when the when the traumas uh, when when people experience trauma uh, the traumatized uh and the traumatized experience the moods and whatever is associated with the traumas lock in our uh, central brain, the limbic system, the, the uh, amygdala, and it's always alarming. It's always alarming. I'm, I'm living in, a, in an insecure, uh, re-experiencing, re-triggering, and all of this. So EMDR is an eye movement. Uh, when, they, when we do therapy, there are a few people, but most, know, most use is eye movement. Because when you move, it's the way to unlock your brain's memory. Yeah. Great, great. Explaining okay. in shorts. Unlocking process of the locked yes. brain. So yes. never yes. heard that the brain can be locked. <laughs> it is, it is locked. Never that's why a lot of people, that's why a lot of people leave the present, leave the, leave the, leave uh, the past in the present. Great. Because of the brain and the memory. Yeah, thank you so much, Sotiri, for your time and for your valuable sharing. Uh, thank you so much. At the same time, I wanted to thank our audience watching from far and wide. Uh, they have a lot of comments as well. I don't have a lot of time to read all that, but hopefully comment uh, after. Uh, and I and I think that we enjoyed, uh, certainly we enjoyed uh, your sharing about, uh, because you are a psychologist, psychotherapist, and a uh, person who is very vocal about all these and uh, this is not the first time you've been vocal about it because you've been vocal about uh, the same topics uh, at different uh, distinguished places ted talks uh, and many other places and thank you for your time thank you i have to say that i can be some people say you can't be an advocate you can't be an advocate and peace at the same time but i think it's possible you can be the you both at the same time Yes, yes. <laughs> you, can be, you can be an advocate at the same time, you can be a peace activist. Yes, yes, at the same yeah. time. Yeah, we had to break free all these unnecessary, I'm, I'm not saying unnecessary, these kind of like normal human emotions and thoughts that they think, you know, they always think uh, social stuff from one dimension. Like people, yeah. we had to see, yeah. we had to look at everything from different dimensions so that we can see uh, people are differently good, right? Yeah, yeah. People judge, and, like people think this is orange, this is blue. You have to choose one. Actually, you don't need to choose. You can. I probably think it's not the people, it's the mind. Mind always okay. wants to find <laughs> out the start and the end. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah. The beginning yeah. and the end. This is the nature of the mind. So they are, they kind of fall, fall prey to that mind. Yes. Uh, but Relate, we have to see, we don't a lot see the mind. Teaching. But we don't see the mind, we see the people. We say it's the people. True, you're right, you're right. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Satiri. Thank you, everyone, watching this. Thank and you so tuned. much. Stay tuned for uh, other interviews coming up. And have a good night. Have a good day. Take care.